Well, welcome to First Tuesdays. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this morning for a very exciting program that I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce the session and um, our series of First Tuesdays here. Today, Carolyn Peterson from the Washington State Library is joining me. I'm Jennifer Fenton. And we're here as your facilitators and hosts today. I'm very pleased that you could join us. We have Jeremy and Non available to provide tech support. And Jeremy is here now to um, assist. If you need help, just send a chat message, and we will do what we can to help you out. This is brought to you by the Washington State Library um, with our Institute of Museum and Library Services funding. And now we'd like to know, uh, there are 18 of us in the room, is who all is here. So if you could please take a moment and everyone type in chat what library you are from and what state, if you're from out of Washington State. That would be extremely helpful. So we're going to take about two minutes. So please go ahead and sign in in chat. Thank you. And as you can see from the chat, we have people from all over, as far away so far as Alberta and Kansas. Oh, thank you, Kansas. Um, they have a group of six. If you are viewing this with several people, please go ahead and let us know how many are in your group. That's also very helpful. Thank you so much for sharing that information with us. And a lot of people from Washington State from various parts, including our own state library and our neighbors Timberland, as well as across the state in eastern and central Washington, um, Walla Walla. And we have Mount Vernon up north in Washington. So we have a lot of people from different parts of the state and even different parts of um, the country in Canada. So welcome to everyone. So I'm not going to uh, let you keep typing in if you haven't already done so. Go ahead and sign in and chat. But it's my pleasure now to turn this over to our guest presenters today. And they are joining us from the Seattle Public Library. And they're going to talk to us about connecting with your community via Facebook. They already like you. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves and take it away. So please. Um, Take it away. Excellent. Welcome to this workshop on effective use of Facebook for libraries. Thank you to Jennifer and the Washington State Library for asking us to present today. I'm Caroline Ullman, Assistant Director of Communications at the Seattle Public Library. And with me today are Virtual Services Librarian Toby Thomas and Reader Services Librarian Jared Mills. At the end of this hour, you will know how to create a process that supports creativity, accuracy, and efficiency. You'll understand what kinds of posts build community and invite interaction. And you'll know how to build internal support, manage problems, and promote your page. All important things. We're excited to share what we've learned. In the last two years, we've more than tripled our number of fans, and we've seen more people interacting with us and posting on our wall. We, we think we're successfully using Facebook co to connect with library lovers, and we hope you to be successful, too. Our goal today is we've uh, aimed this workshop at libraries of all sizes that want to use existing Facebook pages more effectively. We're not going to cover the basics of setting up a Facebook page, but feel free to email us if you have any questions about that. We've put up our email addresses at the end of the presentation. So today, we have one editor and two librarians. We are here to tell you that your fans are out there. 
You just have to connect with them. Jared? Thank you. Welcome, all. Uh, my name is Jared Mills. Once again, I'm a reader services librarian here at the Seattle Public Library. Um, first, let's talk about a little about, bit about our library system and who we are. Um, the Seattle Public Library ha is 26 branches plus our large central library. Um, currently, the social media team is made up of members from three different departments, all within the central library, which is what this beautiful building is right here. Um, uh, in the future, we hope to expand so that we can include branch staff um, and get them involved as well. Um, we have to figure out a good way to um, work together across the system. Um, usually, um, it's getting people to have time um, to meet um, that keeps us from having branch staff involved at the moment. Um, you know, we have to figure out a good way to work easily together from different floors and different departments, and that's what the process is all about. Um, part of uh, putting together our social media team, it's gone through different iterations um, and has evolved from how we work and the things we hope to accomplish our goals. But uh, you know, building the process doesn't happen all at once. Um, some of our major milestones in the last year, um, as you can see, they're spread along the timeline with periods during which we didn't innovate at all, just monitored how things were going. Um, then we adopt a sort of need-to-do approach where we deal with issues and roadblocks when they come up. Um, not before because it's hard to know when these roadblocks are and what they are. Um, part of that due to the fact that Facebook is constantly changing as it just underwent a major change not too long ago. Um, so the first thing that you should ask yourself is what's the purpose of your Facebook page? Um, and this is something that you have to decide for yourself depending on your library system, what's going to work for you. So when you ask yourself what's your mission going to be, you're asking what are you trying to do with your Facebook page? What are you hoping to accomplish? Um, to answer this question, you'll be on the road to defining your mission on, face on Facebook. Um, and it's going to depend on how you want to build your Facebook and how much time you can allot to it, um, how much energy your organization can put into it. But you have to be realistic about what you can accomplish. Um, we can't all be New York Public Library um, who have somewhere around 45,000 fans. Um, as of our last count, um, you have to consider your resources, your time, energy, staffing, and ask yourself, what can you accomplish? And this is going to depend, once again, on not only your library, but the support system you have within your library. Um, so it's about evolving slowly, naturally, and reassessing your goals as you go about and as you interact with your fans and your Facebook page. Um, some of the examples, uh, a couple of, of examples of goals you might want to set. Um, give yourself until December to get 100 fans. Um, devote five hours of staff time a week and see where you get. Um, setting goals are things that are going to help you answer big questions, such as how do you know if your Facebook page is successful? How are you going to, if the need arises, justify the staff time? Um, the energy into creating a Facebook page. Um, once you have 500 fans, do you want to just maintain that? Do you want to increase? Is your goal always to get more fans? Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but a good strategy for you and your organization is to set those goals so you know whether you're achieving them or not and what you might need to do differently. Um, you can set goals and surpass them and then reassess them, and then if you need to, change directions. Um, some of the qualitative goals um, that we've seen, they're not always uh, apparent when we start certain things. We've done a lot of different um, events on Facebook, and as we've done more of them, we've kind of, from that point, decided, OK, this was a successful one. This wasn't a successful one. And why is that? Um, one of the goals that we developed over time was that of transparency. 
We wanted our fans to see what we wrote, but also what others wrote. So we adopted a practice of being very open as far as who could post on the wall. We all agreed not to take down downer or negative comments. Um, another value we discovered was that the authentic tone of voice, being friendly and casual, is a, is a voice that's unique to Facebook when it comes to the library. So it sounds like an actual human being, um, rather than just you know releasing press releases on your Facebook page, which isn't really what Facebook is. So what do you absolutely need to cover? when you have your Facebook page. Um, once you know what your bases are, you can take steps to make sure that they are covered. Some of, these, some of our bases might be different than yours. Um, we monitor our walls seven days a week. So if something inappropriate according to our terms of use is posted on our wall, we're there to take it down immediately, um, which, you know, once again takes allocation of staff time to make sure that somebody is always on monitor duty and they're able to deal with those things. Um, responding. We respond to questions on Facebook. We respond to um, questions whether they're, how do I download an ebook? Um, we've answered reference questions on Facebook. Um, we get a lot of them via Facebook, and we try to respond to them as quickly as possible um, and treat it just as if a patient were to come in. Um, off the street and ask us a question at the reference desk. Accuracy is another thing that we consider one of our bases. Um, it's important because we're a library. Um, we try and bring that to our Facebook page. We also try and be flexible with our posting. Um, and part of being flexible is reacting quickly to things that are going on. So if there's something that's timely, um, we try and post about it as soon as we can. And the last one is frequency. So we try and post six times a week um, throughout the day during our open hours. We recently went from seven days to six days because of, um, once again, resources. Um, we weren't able to keep up with that frequency. But part of having um, a, successful, a successful Facebook page for us was showing that our Facebook page is active. It's alive. Um, we're interacting with people, and we're constantly posting things. Um, Um, the other part of the process that's important is getting a good workflow. Um, some of the key ingredients to a good workflow is you can go through, is finding which workflow works for you and your organization. Um, you can go through several before you hit the best. Um, and there are many that just may work OK. But part of it is, once again, evolving with your page and how your workflow goes. Um, Scalability is also important so that you may start out as a one-person team, but you could grow to three or five or seven or ten or however many it takes. Um, you know, as soon as you get what your bases are that you want to cover, you can then look at what your scalability will be and how your workflow is going to work um, and see whether that's sustainable or not. Another thing that's very important is to document as much as you can. Um, we know that at our organization that change happens. And if you don't leave those, that documentation of how things are working, um, you know, others can't use your process. Others can't build upon uh, what you've started. Um, so for example, if everyone on your team caught the flu, would your library be able to keep up this service for, you for a few days without you? Would they be able to take something, no even, to take something offensive off of your Facebook wall? Um, part of that is having the documentation and the organization set up where they're able to do that. Um, some of the tools that we feel you absolutely need, the bare bones, um, a shared space, calendar, and people. Um, these are the things I'm going to cover with the rest of my part. Um, and then Toby's going to talk about the ideas. So I'll cover the calendar, people, and shared space. 
So our shared space is on our, um, we call it the InfoNet. It's our internal server. Um, it doesn't look like much, but it's one of the key components of our success. Without this forum for sharing ideas, we'd be lost. Uh, it's an internal space where all staff can provide input or ideas, and this is staff across the system, from librarians to clerical staff. Anyone can access this and make post ideas. Um, our shared space is a blog format on our internet, but it could easily be a wiki or a blog or from an external service um, like PBWiki or Wikispaces or even WordPress, um, just somewhere where you can put in your ideas and where other people can collaborate. So we use it for writing posts, sharing ideas, um, group editing, link checking, um, and also for tracking the status of posts. So if somebody submits a post, they can go back and see um, how it's been edited and what date it's been scheduled for, and if it hasn't been chosen, why that might be. Um, this is the status column in our shared space um, that shows what's ready, and we can track the flow of posts. Um, this shows, as you can see, when things are not ready, when they've been posted. Um, we also have posts called Evergreen, which are posts that can go up at any time. So it's good to have that little cachet of posts where if you don't have anything scheduled for that day, um, or you're kind of low on ideas, you can dip into your Evergreen area. Um, over on the right-hand side, you can see this is where um, people can comment um, you can see how many comments and responses a post idea has, um, how, how many it's received, also whether it's something for Twitter or Facebook. Um, I forgot to mention that, but we also use this space for our Twitter account. Um, and we try and differentiate our Facebook and our Twitter posts. We don't do a lot of cross-posting where we post the same thing on Twitter as we do on Facebook, um, which is another thing that we feel is one of our, why we've been successful is keeping those uh, different vo voices very distinct and different. Um, here's a, a detailed post you can see. Um, as you can see, one person will suggest the idea in this um, instance, it's Toby, and it was about when um, Sherwood Schwartz died. Um, and then everyone responded afterwards um, with different post edits, um, different ideas. So with this one, he j Toby just had the idea that we should post something about it. Um, so what we he put the rough idea in there and asked for input. And as you can see, we went through and made different post suggestion ideas and what we might want to add and different ways that we could approach this post. Um, it was something timely, and it was um, just as he had died. It was the day that he died, and we wanted to put something up and you know make it timely. And it was something that was also trending on Twitter um, at the time as well. In that part, you can see where he's posted there. Um, we also try and put the, um, the finalized post after we've decided on what it is um, and go from there. So that when someone goes in to finally post it, they can see what was finally posted. Um, and you can also see the evolution of the idea. Um, we also use calendars. The calendar has been a lifesaver in many instances. Um, you can use free calendars. This is, once again, part of our internal um, intranet. Um, you can use more than one. You can use it for scheduling who's on the day, um, who's the monitor for the day, as well as what's been posted or what is supposed to be posted on a particular day. Um, we use Exchange and SharePoint, which is part of our intranet. But you could easily use a Google, cal Google Calendar excuse me, or another online option. Um, we use the calendar to schedule updates, assign duties, uh, stay in our timeline, as well as our regular feature posts, um, which we've been trying to do more. People, people is the other part that's really important for our, our success. Um, we write, we write the way we write because we are a group of people who fine tune each other's phrases and flesh out each other's ideas. Um, we meet once a week and we're what make our Facebook what it is. We all have different interests, different voices, um, and we try and bring that to the table when we come up with our post ideas. Um, and not just things that we're interested in, but we try and 
cover a wide range of things. We try and make our posts as diverse as possible because we have a very diverse patron population. Another important part of having people is having the two sets of eyes. Um, that's the idea and the that we use when we're editing all of our posts. Um, there's a lot of trust that goes into representing your library, especially in a public medium like Facebook. The library needs to give up some control, and this started out as a way to build trust among departments at the library, but became one of our bottom lines. We always have another person look at, at something before it's posted. This helps catch errors as well as make sure posts are clear and make sense out of context. Um, links can have issues with posts, so double checking them is worth it as well. Two sets of eyes is the perfect balance between personality and accuracy, and best of all, you just need two people. So rather than having a committee of people decide on what gets posted and losing some of that voice, having the two sets of eyes can catch those errors with, without losing that voice. The second eye editor said that they'd expect the link to be a list of hot new kids books in this example. Instead, the link led to a page about the summer reading program. So the second I had to ask, what was the point of this post to ask for books, suggestions, or to promote the summer reading program, and how could it do both? Um, we decided to post the question without a link and post a sign up for summer reading prompt later that week. Um, as you can see, one of the things that it's good to do is differentiate what are you trying to accomplish with your post. Are you trying to start a discussion about hot books for kids this summer, or are you trying to promote the summer reading program? Both are things you would want to do, but should they be combined in one post? So some of the tips for the process um, is use the tools you have. You can find lots of free resources online, once again, like PBWiki or the Google Calendar. Um, for scheduling. Um, when we did scheduling, we didn't go into depth about our scheduling because it would take a lot of time because it's a complicated process. Um, but we do have a well understood schedule and a chain of contin contingencies that is vital to getting things posted and making sure that we're timely. Um, it's also important that you review this schedule frequently to make sure it's working for everyone and everyone knows it well. Um, Part of that is when there are, using the example of someone getting sick, someone moving departments, um, having that schedule set, which are all things that have happened to us, and having that schedule set up where there's always a backup and a contingency is very important because if it's something that needs to be posted that's timely about an event and then it doesn't get posted, um, you know, that can be unfortunate, especially if it's to promote an event that someone else in the library had planned. Um, we also have a dummy account on Facebook. Um, we use the dummy account when we, uh, for practicing to see how a link will look or a photo will look when it's posted to our wall. Um, this has been really valuable, especially as we've posted things that, um, uh, links that may be uh, accessed through a database or other things, and sometimes they don't show up the way you want them to, and that might, might change whether you would post it or not. So it looks like that is it for me, um, and we'll go to Toby with the ideas. Hello. Okay, so after you get the page set up and you have some kind of process outlined, um, what do you actually post on the page? I think that thought can be a little bit paralyzing for people because it's kind of like where the rubber meets the road. You have to really do something now. Um, we hope that at least after this session, you'll have a lot of ideas that we've used that you can try out and see if they work for you. Um, so where do you get your good ideas and what makes a good idea? Jared kind of outlined our ideas blog where we generate ideas and we kind of edit them and talk about them together. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what makes a good idea. So. This, this is kind of always evolving, and Facebook is always sort of changing how this works. And recently, I think it was like November or something last year, it was a major change. So we've kind of been scrambling to understand how it works and what's new. But basically, there's this, you know, when you log into Facebook, people see their, what's called their news feed. That's where all their, they're seeing their posts of friends that 
things that their friends have put up and all their other things that they follow. And up at the top there, there's a sort button, and you can see that there's an option for highlighted stories first or recent stories first. And currently, what happens is the default is it shows your highlighted stories at the top of your list. Um, and highlighted stories are stories that, you know, they, Facebook has a complicated algorithm for how they choose whether something is going to show up as a highlighted story or not. And it depends on how close you are to that person, uh, how many comments and likes that particular story got, um, how often you interact with that friend or that page. Um, so it's, we don't totally understand how it works, but it does all those things about interaction, it does affect who ends up seeing your post. The other option there is recent stories first, and that will just put it into order by date of all the people that you're seeing. So what does that mean? It means that basically it all comes down to your content. So if you make your post good, then you'll reach more people. Content that gets more interactions from people, gets shared by more people, they end up getting seen by more people. So the more people that interact with you by liking, by sharing, by commenting on things that you post, the more people will actually end up seeing that post. Also, the more that a single person interacts with your content, the more that single person will see more from you in the future. So it's this sort of complicated algorithm for how you're going to be able to reach more people. So it kind of goes back to your mission and goals. How can you move toward your goals and achieve, the, achieve them? Think about your post ideas as kind of your concrete ways of, achieve, of achieving those goals. Why would someone want to follow your page? Are they going to get something out of it? Are they going to find something different than they've got on your website or at a branch in person? What are they going to get that's different and new? Over time, we decided that we wanted to focus on engaging with people, building community, and promoting our services, our staff, and our programs. So how did we do that? I'm going to go through each of those three key areas and show you some examples of posts that we think kind of meet those goals. So the first one is engage. I was joking with Caroline earlier that I kept reading this as enrage when I first wrote it, but it's important, do not enrage your people that are following you. Um, so one of the keystones of social media is the ability for people to interact with each other and to participate. So we need to make use of that. That's what it's for. Facebook gives you the chance to connect with people in a very personal way. And it's different than the way that they're going to interact with you on your website or your calendar or your catalog. So I think of it in this way. In a lot of ways, many of our physical locations are moving in the direction of more self-service, uh, more online holds, more downloading, and less FaceTime with staff. And I think that people enjoy that FaceTime with staff, and they're not getting it as much anymore. And Facebook kind of gives you a new way to kind of regain some of that lost personal interaction with people. So you get to show some personality, and you can just show a sense of humor that the organization is made up of individuals. And the interaction provides a chance for people to feel personally connected and invested in the library. So here are some examples of things that we've done with this idea. So this one is a post. Um, it reads, you never love a book the way you love a book when you were 10. And it was a quote from Lemony Snicket. And then we asked, what was one book that you loved when you were 10? People have opinions, and if you can come up with the right questions, a lot of people will want to share their opinion. And Facebook is designed for this interaction. You know, people want to share what they know or what they're interested in. And if they're following you, then they're interested in books. <laughs> uh, what else? So this was a an April Fool's Day post. We tried to be funny. and. It is the library's new combination bookmobile taco truck increases reading rates among late night snack seekers. It got 123 people who thought it was funny. So we liked it. We thought it was fun. And again, it's displaying that human side, the personal side that has a sense of humor that can be a little bit more restricted when you're 
on a website or a more formal environment. We can also try experimentation. There was an event in 2010 where local authors in Seattle wrote a book together over a short period of time. It was like over one or two months. And each author spent like a week or something writing one chapter for it, or maybe a day. I don't remember exactly. So we took that idea and tried to turn it into a Facebook post. So we sort of gave a starter sentence for a plot or a story, and then letting people join the conversation by making up the next line in the story. Um, it was about 40 people who participated, and it didn't actually sort of make sense together, but it was really funny, and people got into it, and, you know, the story involved a time-traveling couple and a pet iguana, and it was really fun to read, and something you probably wouldn't expect from a library's page. So the other goal that we had, build, we wanted to build community around books and around reading and about the library itself. So one of the great things about Facebook is that you can see people begin to interact with each other on your post, not just with you or with the post itself. Um, so creating situations where people can share ideas about their favorite books, their favorite movies, or giving them a chance to talk about the library, it's a way to build a community and get conversations started. So here's some posts that we had around this goal. Okay, so one of our favorite posts to highlight, and it's sort of a full day project that we did, it's called the Reader's Advisory Day that we do on, on Facebook. So last summer, we tried an experiment where we asked people to post three books or authors that they liked, and we'd give them at least one personalized suggestion based on what they said. And it worked really well that first time. I think we had over 100 that first time. Then in December, we tried to do it again, but as sort of a, around the idea of giving books as gifts. So we made, this time we made sure that we had people scheduled with some off-desk time so that they could concentrate on the questions coming in on the page. Um, and we tried, in most cases, to get a response within 10 to 15 minutes. It was a little bit terrifying, but in the end, it was really fun, and everybody enjoyed it. And the best part is that it wasn't just us as librarians responding with our suggestions. Other people were chiming in with suggestions for each other. So it was really, it really was about the community that evolved around the idea of giving books. And between two days, I think we had almost 200 people walk away with actual personalized reading and buying suggestions. I mean, this is the lifeblood of the library. This is what we want the library to do, right? And Facebook can be the perfect environment for that. Um, if you can't, if, you're, if your particular library doesn't have the capacity to do something on such a large scale, you can get people to give their own suggestions to each other. Um, this is a way that, that you can sort of be realistic about what you can handle, but it also still gets people involved in talking and sharing about things that they actually care about and have, have opinions about. So this post was, if you could sh suggest one book to someone who thinks nonfiction is boring, what would it be? Very popular post. Apparently, people in Seattle really like nonfiction. In some cases, we've taken these posts where we've asked people for their suggestions about something, and we've turned them into a book list in our catalog that we share later. So this one, we asked people, what was your favorite provocative book title? And we got a lot of comments about it, people who thought, you know, gave us ideas for books that had really provocative titles, and we put them together in a list and posted it. Um, so they're community-built book lists, which is pretty cool, I think. And if your catalog doesn't support that, so if you can't make a book list and share it, you can do things like use the suggestions that you get to set up a book display in your branch, or put a book display on your website or something based on the ideas that you get and the feedback you get. Um, posts can act as discovery tools for people, so maybe they'll find a good idea for a movie, a CD, or a book that they want to check out. And it gives people another reason why they would want to be interested in your page and why they might want to check on your page, because maybe they'll find something that they weren't expecting. 
Um, this post is, we've all got one. What's the movie you love that gets blank stares when you bring it up because nobody knows it? Um, in posts like these, we've also noticed people who comment early come back and also comment on other people's comments. So they get, they once they start participating, they come back and participate again. And our final goal was to promote our resources. So we finally went to an online uh, fine payment system, which we'd been asked about for years. And Facebook was a natural place where we'd want to adver advertise the option. And it was a huge hit. We had you know, 126 people who liked it. Um, there's, it's also a great place to share what you've created in-house. So in our case, we share podcasts that we record, um, documents that our staff have put together, videos that we make, links to items in the catalog. And when you include content like this, it, it lets people share it with their friends, which also helps you expand your reach. Uh, you can use it to promote your foundation or your friends groups. Um, this post was about a citywide fundraising day. And in the end, the Library Foundation ended up getting more individual donations than any other organization on this drive. We think in part because of our Facebook page. Um, and of course, events. I think a lot of people, when they first start thinking about what they're going to post on Facebook, they get really caught up on just posting events. And while it's totally fine to post events, you don't want to just put an event in there. You want to make it a little bit different and exciting. So um, we have these adult story times that one of our librarians reads for people at the Central Library during lunchtime that people can come. So we try to make our posts a little bit different and try to find something, maybe there's an interactive aspect where people can comment on it or ask a question about the event or somehow involve them a little bit more. Um, and we also try to post events just a day or two in advance instead of like a week or a couple of weeks in advance, because Facebook tends to be more immediate kinds of things, we think. And just because we couldn't fit them all in, a few more ideas here. Um, your absolute favorite novel, one, two, three, go. And then just let people have at it. Um, we also, there's also the option in Facebook to create a poll where you can ask a question, set up a set of responses, and then let people vote on their response. So we asked, what's your favorite genre? And we got, I think, over 300 votes for different types of genres there. Um, and then something really simple, like click like if you love to read. You know, sometimes people just want to do something easy and simple. In all of these ways, again, it's getting people involved on your page so that you can expand your reach, that they'll see more from you in the future, and eventually reach more people. So in closing with ideas, some tips. Focus on things that are timely. Um, if there's something going on locally or world events that seem to be catching a lot of interest, try to think of a post that ties in with that. Try to think of library resources that tie into that. Make sure that all your library staff know there's a Facebook page for the library and give them a chance to have input on ideas. Um, free up your creativity of your shelvers and your desk clerks. It doesn't just have to be a librarian or administrator. Like, try to get your, creative, your creativity from everybody. Um, borrow freely from other Facebook pages. We invite you to share our posts, come up with your own versions of them. There are some great things that our people are doing out there. And you can borrow ideas if you're feeling at a loss. Try new things. Experiment to find what works. Um, we can't guarantee that any of these things are going to work for you, but over time you're going to see which kinds of posts get more comments from people in your community. Go with those. Use that exper experience. Um, you probably already have a calendar of events and do various kinds of promotions online. So don't, again, don't just repost the same posting on Facebook. 
try to think of something a little bit different. Find a way that an angle about the event that's a little bit, you know, skewed or different or gives people a chance to comment on it and not just have to look at it and read it. All right. I think that wraps it up for me, and I'm going to turn it over to Caroline. Thanks, Toby. So on to administration. I'm going to talk about how to build internal support, consistently and competently handle problems that arise, and how to promote your page. As you've heard Jared and Toby talk about with process and ideas, it does take time to do Facebook well. So it's vital that your organization support your outreach. You want to make sure that your supervisors and your library leaders understand why it's important and that they actively back you up. So make it easy for them. Explain why it's important for your library to be on Facebook. And why is that? Well, Facebook is huge worldwide, across the country, state by state. You can feel sure that at least some of your patrons are on Facebook. And really, all you have to do is reach out to them in a way that helps them feel connected. But you might have to keep reminding your administrators why you're spending all of this staff time doing this. So how do you do that? One way is to collect statistics. Take a look at your Facebook Insights feature. This is for uh, Facebook fans with, uh, pages with 30 fans. Page administrators can, can view this. You can get to know your fans by looking at your Insights pages. So for example, demographics for our page, about 2 thirds of our fans are female, and a third of them are male. More than half of them are between the ages of 25 and 44, but we do have fans in every age group. Most of them are from the United States, although we do have fans uh, across the world. Over this past year, we've averaged about 300 new fans a month, and we're uh, close to reaching about 13,000 in, in the next month or so. The new Insights page also breaks out interaction statistics into three categories that you can see there. So likes, uh, information about the people who have liked your page, that in essence uh, is your fans. The reach, information about the people who've seen any sort of content from your, fan, uh, from your page, whether it's uh, comments or um, photos or likes or what have you, and then talking about this, which is information about the people who've liked, commented, or shared any of your content posted on your wall or in any kind of way interacted with your page. So once you have those statistics, what do you do with them? We use them in our monthly reports to the library board, reports to the city librarian, sometimes reports to city government, uh, to our internal leadership team. Basically, whoever you need to support you in-house, you make sure that they have the statistics that they need to make it easy to give you that support. So you tell them how many new fans you add a month. You highlight popular posts over the past week or the past month. You pass on some comments. Uh, for example, we always make sure when we get comments uh, critical or favorable about the library system that we pass them on to the city librarian's office so they become part of our, of our public record. Offer to give a presentation to your library board or your friends or your foundation group. And get on the agenda of your all staff meetings, if you have them, a couple of times a year to make sure that your staff also knows what you're doing with Facebook so they can, they can support you and they also can help you with outreach. In your own internal meetings, uh, make Facebook a standing agenda item at your work uh, your work group staff meetings and talk about what you're doing. 
we're we're often asked uh, how to deal with problems, and you know, hey, with 800 million friends, what could possibly go wrong on Facebook? You, know, you can get negative feedback, uh, advertisements posted on your page, spam, off-topic posts, personal attacks, profanity, all kinds of stuff can can pop up. And we have some tips for how to deal with that. The first one really is to build community. I like to think that building your Facebook community is, is akin to building a garden. And you create a healthy garden by building up the soil so it nurtures healthy plants. On Facebook, you use the same idea. You're using interesting posts to create an active, fun space that attracts like-minded people who love libraries and respect what you do. And to some degree, your page will become self-policing because your fans will come to your defense, which is very nice to see. However, you do need to monitor your page because if there is a problem, you will want to act swiftly. You don't want to leave a problem hanging around on your Facebook page unresolved. But really, the bottom line is that it is your Facebook page, and you have control over what you choose to post, what others post, whatever. Uh, and you can always report egregious behavior to Facebook, which has its own standards for engagements. Um, but here are some specific strategies to help you. Uh, negative feedback, for example, we have chosen to respond on Facebook. We are respectful. There's no need to be defensive. Respond in the way that you would if you were interacting with someone in person standing right in front of you. And you answer in the spirit of the library. That actually builds trust because everyone can see that you're responding right there. And as I said, you often will find other fans leaping to your defense. Sometimes you will find ads or spam or attacks or profanity on your, on your wall. Uh, we remove ads. Uh, sometimes we'll send a message, for example, if it is an author who is trying to advertise their book, we will send them our purchasing guidelines and tell them how to suggest that the library buy uh, a copy. Off-topic comments, if your post is getting derailed, we will sometimes quickly email the rest of our social media team and ask them to post as individuals so that we can get back on track. It does help to have standards so that you can reply consistently and respond consistently. Uh, I think as Jared mentioned earlier, we developed an online terms of use that we call interacting with the library online. We link to it from the information page uh, section of our Facebook page. And that makes it clear that we think of our online space as an extension of, uh, extension of our library buildings. Our buildings are safe and supportive spaces, and so is our Facebook page. This document spells out that we delete commercial posts, personal attacks, posts that use profanity, insulting language, etc. Et and it's on our website also, so feel free to, to use it if, you, uh, uh, if it fits your needs. But really, in our experience, the problems are really rare. We have nearly 13,000 fans, and the vast majority are respectful. Basically, our main problem is commercial posts, because everybody wants to advertise their business on a Facebook page that has a lot of fans which leads us to promotion. Uh, there are lots of options. You can uh, promote on a small scale, but you need to be smart and strategic and think back to your goals for the page. The small scale example, staff can add find us on Facebook to their emails. Uh, teen services librarians can mention your Facebook page at school visits. You can. Um, 
if you have the budget, you can send signs out to your uh, locations to say, find us on Facebook, have everybody, have everybody post one. Or you can think bigger. If you've got the budget, you can do uh, print or electronic newsletters. You can buy ads on, on Facebook. Uh, there are lots of ways that you can get, get the word out. So some tips for administering your page. Stay visible in your community in your library community. Gather those statistics and use them. Remind your library what it's getting out of Facebook. Pass along those comments, compliments, constructive criticism. Cross-promote. Use the tools that you have. So link to your Facebook page from your website or from your blogs. If you do print publications, such as a summer reading brochure, there's always little space here and there. You can leave. You can fill those spaces with little ads. Find us on Facebook. Use those email signature lines. Model the behavior and grow your Facebook garden. Create a safe, supportive, self-policing space. And most of all, don't be afraid. You will have established a strategy and you know how to respond when problems arise. You can do it. Remember, they already like you. Thank you so much for asking us to present. We uh, certainly are open to, to uh, answering questions, and our email addresses are listed there, too, if you have any questions for us individually or after this session. Thank you. Great. Um, before uh, we take questions, Carolyn, did you want to, uh, Carolyn State Library, did you want to share about next month's program? Yes, I, I would like to do that. And um, I just wanted to mention that we're going to have Linda Clark, who is works out of the census office in the uh, Seattle. And uh, of course, it's time for us to really, by 2012, most of the stuff that the census has available from the um, 2010 census is out there. It's a very valuable product, but it's not always easy to find. So we're going to have that. It's going to be our, our, um, our topic for next uh, month is how to access the census via the website and how to find things there. And she's going to give us tips and tricks. So thank you. And then I'll let you now. I'm sure you have plenty of, of questions to ask them. And I wanted to get in before people started leaving. So OK, I'll, that's enough for me. Thank you. So there are some questions and um, about having different Facebook pages. So Seattle Public has one Facebook page, and they post from different departments. Uh, and Beth wants to know how many of the 12,000 fans comment. So it looks like 2,000 to 3,000 per post. So it sounds like they're a pretty active, engaged group. Other questions? Did you have to check with the union before asking all staff to offer suggestions for posts? Um, so uh, this is Jared. Um, no, we we are um, most of us on the social media team are in the union, um, and we try and offer those things um, in our library system. We try and um, offer those opportunities um, for people to be engaged in the library um, in different ways. Um, so uh, we've had circulation staff write blog posts on our blog, Shelf Talk. Um, and that's kind of one of the things in our system that's um, supported. It is um, a little um, more difficult when you're dealing with um, union issues, but it hasn't been a problem yet. We haven't had a lot of um, non-librarian staff um, offer post suggestions for Facebook and Twitter. Um, but we have had a lot with, um, with our blog. Um, it, it tends to be a really popular thing, and it, it's kind of as staff time allows and as their immediate a manager um, allows them to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll, this is Caroline. I'll talk about the um, sticky issue of records retention. Uh, the, we, we do re retain our 
records, and we do it by using our internal blog. Uh, so the ideas uh, sharing section that you saw on our InfoNet site also provides a complete record of everything that we post on Facebook and on Twitter. In addition, I also maintain a list of everything that we remove from Facebook so that we can show that we are applying our terms of use consistently across the board. Well, thank you so much. What a great presentation with lots to think about. And it looks like we may be done with questions. I see one person typing. But I will go ahead and stop the archive. And thank you so very much for your time and doing this great presentation. Our pleasure. Thanks for inviting us.